Good day, everyone. So I was asked, what is the easiest method to take apart these lithium iron phosphate battery packs? So here's uh, one of the variants that I've uh, purchased. Uh, now, as you can see here on this side, you have a red wire and here you have a black. So although the main terminals are on the ends, uh, this is also connected to the ends of the pack. So uh, from this black one, uh, this red one to this black one, you have 40 volts. Now every screw that you have along here is connected to uh, one of the cell groups. So if you go from here to here, that's one cell group. From here to here, that's the next. From here to here, that's the next. And so on and so forth, all up to 12. So there's 12 cell groups that form this pack. So the total voltage is 40 volts approximately. Uh, so this is equivalent to three 12 volt batteries in the series. So unfortunately there aren't too many uh, applications where this would function. So most of you buying these packs will probably be tearing them apart. So this one here had this uh, sort of rubber-ish uh, on every screw. Uh, they're actually fairly easy to remove with either a pair of pliers or a screw uh, screwdriver. Um, Another variant had these plastic cover with clips on them and all you have to do is remove the clips. Remove the cover and it exposes the screws. Now a third variant that I've seen uh, actually has this really hard black plastic that was uh, uh, poured in each of these holes and that was actually very difficult to remove. I had to use a Dremel to clean them out to, in order to be able to remove the screws. So in the next step, uh, we'll go ahead and, uh, oh yeah, another thing here, these are, uh, I believe, thermistors, so that keeps track of the temperature of the pack. So you can go ahead and just remove that. We're not gonna be using that anymore. And let's go ahead and remove all the screws. Okay, so with the, the circuit board removed, all of the terminals are exposed. So there is a danger. If you drop a screwdriver on here, it would short circuit. Uh, so that would be, wouldn't be too wise. So the next step in taking this pack apart, we'll lay it on its side. Now on both sides, there's a sort of a plastic film that you can remove. I just take a knife here to get under it. And just pull the, pull the film back. So this is a little sticky. Some of the glue stays behind. But you'll notice that there are screws here. By removing these screws, you'll be able to remove the plastic on both sides to expose the cells. So let's go ahead and remove the screws. So that was the easy part. So this is a little bit more difficult and it's time consuming. But uh, if you take your time and uh, be careful, you can take all this plastic out without making doing too much damage to the cells by pushing the cells and lifting at the same time. Eventually, you'll get it. Okay, so we've now successfully removed one side. Now we need to remove the other side. So 
So on this side, you have the main terminals. So this is where the connections are being made. You have here the one of the terminals, and on the other end, you have the other terminal. There we go. So over here we have the pack positive. And at the other end we have the pack negative. As you notice, these cells are quite dirty. <laughs> so now that you have the cells exposed, you need to figure out where you to cut these to make uh, packs. So one option, of course, is to just simply cut everything apart, test all the individual cells, and keep the best ones and make packs out of those. But you might want to just uh, reuse the way they're already installed, set up. So if you want a 12 volt pack, you need four groups of cells. So like I said before, you could cut this into three packs. You have three 12 volt equivalent uh, packs of cells. Now you might also want to do a 24 volt pack. So you would just take eight of the cells and then keep the other four to combine with another four to make another 24 volt pack. So I think most people are going to want to make cut this into 12 volt packs. So this is again the pack positive. So in order to cut this into four, so we have this is a group of eight cells. This is another group of eight cells. This is another group of eight cells. And there's another group of eight cells. So what you need to do then is you would need to cut this right here. So by cutting this here, you have your 12 volt pack, and this would be the start of another 12 volt pack. Again, positive. So two, so one, two, three, four. So you have to cut this again here. Oops, see, so I made a mistake. These, as you can see, they're made differently. So this is the uh, negative and this is the positive. So this, I have to cut like this and then like this. My pen is dying. So let's look at this again. So we have the positive. They're interconnected in the back here. This are interconnected here. And this ends up being your negative of your 12 volt equivalent pack. Again here, same thing. And again here, same thing. So if you go ahead and cut this over here, and cut it over here, and then you have to do the same thing on, on the other side. This is actually simpler on this side because you just cut the plastic. By cutting the plastic here, you'll have your 12 volt pack, your 12 volt pack, your 12 volt pack. And what you would end up with, here you actually can see the thermistor at the end of this wire. It just fell out of the pack. If you look at here, this is what you end up with. This is a pack. That I've already cut. So this makes your pack negative and this would be your pack positive. So I almost made a mistake, almost cut it here, but that was incorrect. So this is the result. We have a 12 volt pack. Uh, you could use these to do your uh, connection, but although you'll miss, be missing one at the end here, but that's one, two, three, well, one, two, three, four, five connectors for four groups of cells. So I hope you find this uh, video helpful. Thanks for watching. Until next time.